Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I have a, this twisted hank of Lily Sugar and Cream in the color Mod Blue. It's really more of a blue green or a teal, but I thought it would be fun to try to over dye this in my indigo vat. So I'm going to go and pre-soak this yarn before we pop it into the indigo. Our pre-soaked hank of yarn is ready to go into our indigo vat. And this, uh, this only pre-soaked for a couple hours versus uh, a lot longer for some of the other dyes. Um, sort of off to the side, you can see a full ball of yarn that I will be talking about in a different video. Now, I'm not sure how much room this will have here. And I really debated if I wanted to retwist and redye this, re dunk this multiple times, but let's see what we get after one dip. Um, and so I'm gonna kind of hold it with both hands like so. So that way I don't really want to, um, I, I don't wanna let it untwist. So that's why I'm holding it with both hands to kind of keep it twisted. Uh, so we can see what kind of color penetrations we get. And can I lift it up? Yeah, it's funny. I don't know what the color is going to look like um, because I haven't actually tried over dyeing anything yet. So, yeah, okay. But I've been tending to do dips between 30 seconds and a minute or so. Uh, hopefully I'm filming and I can't even stand up to check right now. <laughs> But I'm curious what color this looks. I don't want to bring it into the air. But anyway, okay, it looks like a dirty, a dirty, dirty blue. Whoops, that was a bit of a splash um, into the rinse bath and good. I am recording. Okay, well, what I didn't do before popping it into this rinse is I did not, oh my goodness, this is going to be awesome. You see some of the, that original color peeking through? What I didn't do was squeeze it out. Um, I just plunked it right away. But this rinse bath is to help get some sediment out right away. And so we're not really watching the oxidation happen as much this time because I keep dunking it and pulling it out. But Let's, let's unwrap this. I'm going to set that ball of yarn aside oh, and pull this up over here so we can see. I am in frame, but let's go ahead and untwist this. Oh, where is, oh, there we go. It's like, where is the end? So this is cool. I don't want to redunk this at all. Um, we've got some of the original teal. But we actually got a lot of color penetration in there. This is gorgeous. This is really fun. Um, so, and this shows that you aren't limited by starting with white things and you aren't limited by trying to go for a complete solid color. You can use this to try to get some more variation. So, this is gonna to need to be rinsed a lot and I am gonna be need to be really, really careful about it because I did not add extra ties. But anyway, I am now going to consider if I need to set up any more projects for today. But this vat, this hydrosulfite vat won't last as long as an iron vat, but it should still last a while. So woohoo, woohoo! I don't think I'm gonna show a lot of the washing for this yarn. If you wanna see what washing something from this indigo vat looks like, look at some of the other videos in this Indigo Week series. Um, just, it takes a lot, a lot of rinsing, but through all the rinsing, it doesn't seem like the color is lighter than it was when I started rinsing. The one place where things might start to look a bit lighter is once they dry, it'll look significantly lighter. But even with the rinsing, the colors still seem really, really saturated. I'll give a pink when I'm done rinsing this yarn. This yarn was significantly easier to wash than some of the other ones. Maybe because there was only one dip in the indigo vat, maybe because not 
all of the fiber was exposed to the indigo. Or maybe because I did a little more rinses with the hose outside, but there's very little bleeding once I came inside. Even after I added a little bit of vinegar and a little bit of dish soap to the rinse. Some of the bleeding, there was actually some bleeding from this yarn before I dyed it. So it's hard to know if what I'm seeing is from the commercial dye or from the indigo that I am rinsing out. But either way, I'm about to squeeze out some of the excess water and hang this up to dry. It has been a little over two weeks since I resurrected the dye bath. And I wanted to show you, and I wanted to show you what is going on in here. See how different the color looks? It is now way more of a dark green um, versus the brighter lime green that it was when we started out. I'm gonna go ahead and cover it back up even though it is oxidized at this point. I wanted to show you what the vat looked like once it was uh, completely oxidized so that way you would know a little bit of what to look for. I haven't tried to fix this yet again. However, I do believe that you can add some more of the RIT color remover to bring this back into a reduced state so you can dye more fiber with your indigo. And that is something that I hope to play around with more in the not too distant future. Here is our super fun variegated yarn. The blue color lightened significantly as it dried, but we only did one dip of this yarn into the indigo vat. And look at the depth of color that we got. Um, these color changes are really subtle, but I love the way that the blues mix with the bright teal from the sugar and cream yarn. I think it would be really fun to start with a twisted hank and retwist it multiple times, even if it's white, so that way you can get a variegated yarn with different layers of the indigo. I think that that would be so beautiful. And there's just many, many different of my favorite techniques that I want to play with using my indigo vat in the future. As this video is bringing my first indigo week to a close, I need to offer the biggest thank you from the bottom of my heart to Stony Creek Colors. They reached out to me to offer me a sample of their American grown indigo and also worked with me while I troubleshooted my first vat and helped me come up with a way to resurrect it so I could get the vat that I've used in the video this week. They actually have a kit with the RIT color remover so you can create your own hydrosulfate indigo vat. And I'll provide a link to that in the video description. In addition to the indigo, Stony Creek Colors sent me some other natural extracts. Uh, so I could play around with some more natural dyeing. At the time I'm concluding this video, I haven't tried those yet, but I am really excited to give them a shot. So stay tuned for more natural dyeing videos as we transition from summer to fall. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching this video and the whole Indigo Week video series. I had a lot of fun going from a failure to a success and creating some beautiful, beautiful blues using natural indigo. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the new content that I've got coming out. Finally, did you know that you can buy the yarn that has been dyed in the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube videos? I have an Etsy store, Chemnitz Creations, that has dozens of skeins of hand-dyed yarn featured in past and upcoming YouTube videos. There are also occasional samplers or opportunities to sponsor a new episode of Dye Pot Weekly. So you can find a link to my Etsy store in the video description and iCard. Thank you so much for watching.